John Diarmo with the Gokey Valley Sword Group, and today we're going over Article 17. So, let's dive in. Article 17, Treading Down the Sword. This is the strategic intention of treading on the point of your opponent's sword with your foot. More, precise, <laughs> more precisely, it is the intention of treading on the sword of your opponent with your left foot immediately before it stops when he swings it. If you take the initiative here with your sword, with your body, and with your spirit, you can easily win. Without this strategy, an undesirable situation may develop in which attack and counterattack constantly alternate. The movement of the foot can be slow. The opportunity to tread down the sword does not occur often. Ponder this carefully. So, treading down the sword. Um, First off, this does not mean stepping on your opponent's sword. Uh, Musashi is not suggesting that as their sword stops, you pick up your left foot and, and step on their sword. It's not what this is at all. Um, and in fact, that would be really, really foolhardy. Um, uh, while the uh, Waraji, the, the sandals, um, may not be immediately cut uh, if they turn their sword, uh, to make this step, you're going to have to raise and expose your inner thigh, uh, both inner thighs and the back of the knee. Um, don't, don't do this. <laughs> um, no, he's using tread in the word, uh, in the way that it means to travel along, to, to tread a path. Um, and that's what it is. It's down the path of the sword, uh, rather than the sword itself. So, what are we talking about here? We're talking about uh, a way of entering in. Um, specifically, this relates to the Taino Sen timing, obviously. So, the opponent cuts at you. And what you're going to do is, however you've stepped to, to avoid the cut, you're going to walk in on him with your left foot in the same feeling as though his sword has uh, created kind of a path for you, a wake, and you're just going to walk forward into the opponent's space with that. Um, so why the left foot? Easy. Um, we're setting ourselves up to swing. While we can easily swing uh, with the left foot forward, the assumption is that the person that we're fighting, um, because we're coming to this situation where we could be uh, sort of evenly matched, just caught back in tit-for-tat kind of fighting, uh, the assumption is that the opponent is good and that they're going to try and move somewhere, whether in towards you or more likely uh, away from it in an attempt to parry or void. With the left foot forward, the right foot, which is connected to the right shoulder, which means it's the longest cut side. In other words, if I step forward with my left foot and cut, the distance the sword tip is away from my lead shoulder, which will be my left shoulder, is going to be much smaller than if my right foot steps forward. Right? Because I'm not going to cross my body. Does that make sense? Very simple. Um, so getting into the habit of bringing your left foot forward first makes it easier to work against people who are uh, trying to outdistance you. Because while they may have time to make a single step of motion, you've already got that step countered with your long side forward. So um, they would really have to work hard to get away from you. So yeah. He reiterates this with the idea, uh, sort of the admonition that if you can take the initiative here, um, not just with your sword, but with everything, boom, moving into their space, that you can easily win. And um, it's true. I mean, it takes a little bit of getting used to, because in the beginning, of course, people want to play at their farthest range, right? So they'll, they'll be just where they can swing and kind of bip out because they lack confidence and sort of uh, lack an understanding of how to end the fight efficiently. 
because they're in a they're in a dojo setting. They're in a, a classroom setting where you know things are are contained. Right, you're working against one person in a set environment with set uh, kind of parameters to the engagement, and so you can do stuff like that. It is sort of this like far away tag on the guy. Um, once once you start introducing hazards, um, whether they're other people, whether they're working in different environments, whether they're um, things that make your fight either more difficult or that re-alert you to the danger of what you're doing or what you're practicing to be able to do. In other words, uh, once people realize that the Fukuro Shinai is not going to kill them, it's not going to break a bone, it's not even going to like meaningfully injure them, uh, they're, what dissuades them, what encourages them to get out of the way is that they don't want to lose, like a, like a schoolyard game, they don't want to be tagged and be it. Um, and this, that kind of fear, uh, or motivation, rather, it, uh, it doesn't have the same influence on a person's motion as being worried that you're going to be grievously injured. Um, people tend to be sloppier, uh, with the former. Uh, they leave their body behind and kind of think, oh, you know, if I can, if I can just reach a little further, I can, it doesn't matter if I get hit, I'll hit him first, right? And this is, uh, this is something that you want to be sure that your training drills, um, whether you're working by yourself or, uh, the training drills that your, your teacher is suggesting, don't cultivate this kind of mentality, right? Um, you have to, you have to treat the sword like it's dangerous to be able to learn to move in an appropriate fashion. Otherwise, you're practicing to move away that you're not going to be able to uh, use to accomplish what you want, which is to end the fight uh, when presented with real danger. Right. So, that being said, uh, treading down the sword is another one of those that gets uh, misunderstood a lot. The and it is again the case where the sections in the Go Rindo show that have to deal with this are a lot clearer as to uh, its meaning of, of entering into a person's space rather than physically stepping on their swords. Um, if I recall correctly, he uses battlefield examples of uh, coming in after archers or, or uh, riflemen have shot because they've sort of cleared the path and there's this pause in between and that's what you're treading down. So, it's when doing any kind of work based off of historical documents like this, you really have to get a lot of uh, as, as many examples as you can uh, within your singular method. They, But yeah, so I think that that is about it for Article 17. Um, it's pretty simple. It's was, it was pretty easy. Um, and it's definitely kind of an admonition for beginners. So practice it. And uh, yeah, as always, if you want to understand this, you have to pick up a sword and go train. <laughs>